that. Web pages are simply a plain old text file um, that you can create using any simple text editor like Notepad. In the labs, there's Notepad++, um, variety of tools that you can, you can create and you simply put text in and the way that you indicate what something is on the web page is via what's called a tag. All right, and we did a short example that wasn't a complete web page, but was a fragment of a web page. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to pull that up, take a look at it again, talk a little bit more about tags, and uh, then flesh it out so that we finally do have a complete web page, so that we're not stuck with just a fragment of the web page. So let me pull down the example from last time. I'm going to put the example in a folder called example. It's a good idea to put your projects in a what? It's a good idea to put your projects in a separate folder because our first couple of projects are going to be very simple. There's just going to be one file, but later on we're going to start having multiple files associated with the project. So to keep things clear, uh, it's best to create a folder for a particular project, and then you can just zip up the entire folder, and you'll have all, and I'll have all the files in it, which is what I need to, to grade the assignment. So I created a folder called Example. Now, if you notice in here, it shows the, the page that I created on Monday, called Monday. And I can tell it's a web page because of the little icon next to it, which is the icon for Google Chrome, which is the default browser on this particular machine. Now, actually, we, uh, what, you, what you may or may not know is that file names actually have two parts. They have the, the name of the file, and they have what's called a file extension. And a lot of times, just for simplicity, they, they don't show the file extension. Well, um, that can run into some problems. So it's best for us to always show the file extension. Now, depending on the version of Windows you're using, or if you're using a Mac, um, there's, there's uh, other, other uh, uh, methods to do this. You can go in and you can click off where it says hide extensions for known file types. And I encourage you all to do that. And there we see the full name of the file, which is monday.html. All right. Now, uh, an important thing to recognize here is that we're going to be viewing this file two different ways. We're going to be viewing this file within a text editor, such as Notepad, and we're also going to be viewing the file within a browser. Keep in mind, there's only one file. It's not like there's two files, the notepad file and the browser file. There's only the one file. We're just looking at it two different ways. It would be like the difference between a photograph of you and an x-ray of you, right? There's still only one you, all right? It's just the two different views show two different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off opening this up in notepad. So I'll go right mouse, open with. And Notepad isn't a selection on there. Well, there's a couple of things we could do. Probably the easiest thing to do would be to start up Notepad and go open, browse to it. Now, it says that no files match your search because it's looking for .txt files. We have to go in and change that to all files. Then we can find the file we want and open it. And we have our 
HTML fragment from last time. All right. So I, what I can do is I can make changes to it then and view it in the browser. How do you view it in the browser? Well, simply by double clicking on it. It will bring it up in the web browser. And this will show you once the page is completed and you put it out on the internet, this is what people will see when they visit your site. So again, we have the view within the browser that the outside world's going to see. That's sort of the, the surface picture of our web page. Then we have the code view, which is sort of the internals of, of the page. Now, a couple things about tags. All right, and, and HTML pages in general. First of all, there's what is called white space in with, within a page, uh, empty space. Empty space doesn't matter to the web browser. The web browser compresses any empty spaces into one space. So in other words, if I do this, That's going to have no effect on how the page looks in the browser. All right. I can save it, go to the browser, and click refresh. Page looks identical. All right. This may sound odd at first, but there's a good aspect of that. And the good aspect of that is we can make the page set up so that it's readable. For us, all right. So it's easily understand and readable for us. So we don't have to worry about getting the formatting exactly right within the HTML document. The tags take care of that, all right. And later on, when we learn CSS, that will take care of that. Therefore, we can make this readable. And later on, when we start talking about nesting tags, there's a lot of things you can do as far as laying out your page to make it more readable for you. Why is it important to, to make it readable for you? Because there's a good chance that once you complete something, at some point you're going to have to go back and make a change to it. So if it's laid out in an easy, understandable way, it's easier to go back in after the fact and change it. Truth is, an HTML page could just be one li giant line of code. Could start here and just go thousands of characters to the right. All right? And the browser would have no problem with it. The browser would figure out exactly what to do, and if you had all the tags correct, the browser would display it perfectly. The problem is, is if you want to go back and change it, that would be very hard to read, especially when we start talking about nesting of tags. Okay, so we'll come back to that uh, and remind you throughout the, the, the term. Now, if you recall from last time, tags indicate what a particular piece of content is, what it means. All right? And in this case, the H1 represents that that's a top-level heading. That's a top-level heading or headline or however you want to put it. H2 represents that it's a second-level heading. And the paragraph tag, the P tag, indicates that it is a paragraph of text. You have up to six levels of headings. Now, that doesn't mean that you can only have six headings. You can have as many headings as you need, but there are six levels of them. Top level, second level, third level, fourth level, fifth level, sixth level. And if you think about it, that's a lot of levels. All right? And chances are good that if you think you need more than that, you probably have too much on one page. And you probably need to break your page down. All right? The H1 through H6, the numbers, to my knowledge, H1s through H6 are the only tags that have numbers. In other words, a lot of students will get confused and think that the fir their first paragraph will be P1, their second paragraph will be P2, and that's not the case. All right, because remember, that number doesn't indicate like it's the first, it's the second, it indicates the level. And for paragraphs, all paragraphs are considered to be on the same level, so it's just a P tag for that. Notice that tags come in pairs, and the tags sort of wrap around the content that they're describing. So for example, this is a top-level heading, and the top-level heading goes from here to here. We have the start tag and the end tag, which looks just like the start tag, except there's a slash in front of it. Likewise, an H2 starts here and ends here. Paragraph tag starts here 
and ends here. Now, based on browser defaults, the browser decides, you know, what how big to make these tags, and so on and so forth. Later on, we'll be able to control that via CSS. But right now, we'll stick with just the browser defaults for, for that behavior. So H1s are, are logically the, the biggest ones. So the most important headlines are, are the biggest ones. The second most important are the second biggest ones, and so on down the line. Question. Okay, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the way anything on your web page looks is a combination of two factors. All right. Um, first of all, it depends on the HTML tag. So I, I guess three factors. The, first of all, it depends on the HTML tag. Second thing it depends on is the default of the browser, the default behavior of the browser. The third thing it depends on is uh, any CSS code that you put on your page. All right. So right now, for the first week or so of this class, we don't talk about CSS, so that's, that's a non-issue. So in other words, it gets to be that big because it's an H1, and that's the default for a browser for an H1. And the H2 is that size because it's an H2, and that's the default size for an H2. Yes? Yeah, if they're conceptually considered to be on the same level. So remember, th think of the H1 as being like the, of top importance, the top level. So like if you're making an outline, all right, like uh, imagine you were doing an outline for an English paper. You know, you might have three or four sub topics that are on the top level that you want to talk about, in which case it'd all be H1s. So don't think about, about the order that it comes in, but think about the, like the, the level of importance it is. And that's what determines if it's an H1 through an H6. Now later on, and this is where sometimes students get a little impatient because you know they're, they're ambitious and they want to make fabulous looking web pages the first week. Um, you create the tags to represent what the content really means. Later on, we can style it any way you want to. So if you want to make H2's blue and H1's green, we can do that, all right? We can do that via CSS, but right now we're just gonna stick with the browser defaults. Okay. I mentioned last time, and a couple folks in lab uh, started working on this assignment, and, and they, they made some progress. I mentioned, though, that this, what we have here is not a completed web page, because there's some sort of mandatory tags that we haven't put in the web page. There's, there's a handful of tags that are going to be on all of your web pages. All right? Now, the first one, first of these, is not really a tag, but it's called a declaration. And that is the doc type declaration. And it looks like this. It sort of looks like a tag, but it has an exclamation point, then the word doc type, then a space, then HTML. This indicates what version of HTML we're running. All right. The, the world is sort of in a transition between HTML4 and HTML5. So many websites developed are still HTML4. Many of them being developed are HTML5. This little tip helps browsers figure out which version of the language you're doing. So by sort of tipping off the browser, hey, this is meant to be an HTML5 page, it sort of helps the browser figure some things out. So every, every page should start with a doc type. Yes? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would assume yes, but I, I might be wrong on that. Um, yeah, I, I guess I really don't know. Yes? Uh, that's, just, that's a logical statement, but that's just the way it works. Okay. Yeah, that's just the way it is. I didn't make it up. I'm just, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I mean, it's a logical question. It makes sense, but yeah, you don't have to. Yes? 
Okay, I guess it's not case sensitive then. My mistake. Well, the question was is why don't you have to? And you don't have to because you don't have to, <laughs> you know. All right. So that's not really a tag, that's a declaration, and it just tells the browser. Because if you tell the browser what language you're using, which version of HTML you're using, the, the, the browser can generally do a better job. Uh, and, and later on in the course, we might go into more specifics about that, but for now, it's enough to know, put it in. Second tag that's on every page is an HTML tag. And this truly is a tag, so there's a starting and an ending HTML tag. And this wraps around the entire page. So it, it, it contains all the other tags. This is our first example of what's called nesting with HTML tags. All right? In other words, if you notice, all these tags are between the start HTML and the end HTML tag. Another way to say it is that they're nested within them. It's like those old rushing nest, Russian nesting dolls that they have where there's like a big doll and if you open it up there's a little one inside and you open it up there's a little one inside that until you get a little tiny one. All right. So the way that you show that a tag belongs to another tag or is contained within, maybe is a better way to put it, is if it appears between the start and end tag. Essentially what we've said is all of this stuff is part of our web page. It's part of our HTML document. So our HTML document contains everything between the start HTML tag and the end HTML tag. Next thing, there's a head tag. I should have worn my baseball hat today because my baseball hat has a start head tag on the front of it and an end head tag in the back of it. I'll remember to wear that before the end of the semester. The HTML document itself is broken into two parts, a head and a body. contains information about the page. And there are certain things that we put in the head section. The body of the page is really sort of the web page itself. It's what we're going to see inside the browser window. Right now, what we're going to put in the head section is the title of the page. And that will be in the title tag. before I talked about formatting a page and I talk about how the spaces does, don't really matter. We look at this page. Everything's in the HTML tag. This is part of the title tag. This is part of the body tag. But it's not really apparent at a glance that that's the case. You really have to look and sort of study this to figure that out. That's where we can put some formatting in the page that matters nothing to the browser. Doesn't matter how the page gets displayed, but it's going to help us keep things straight. So what I can do is I can indent the head tag, indent the title tag further, and then do the same thing with the body. So now notice how this is. At a glance, I can tell that the HTML tag contains all of this stuff. I can tell that the head tag contains this. I can tell the body tag contains that. 
I can take my glasses off and see that these tags are part of the body, all right, without even being able to read it, all right? So it's a good practice to format your code in a manner that is readable for you, all right? Because remember, the browser doesn't care about these extra spaces. This page is going to look identical to how it looked before, all right? But if you come back at a later point and need to make a change to it, it's going to be a lot easier to figure things out with this neatly formatted code than it would be um, if the code was just all on one line. Questions about this? So, at the very least, on every page, you're going to have a doc type, an HTML tag, start and end, a head tag that contains a title, and a body tag that contains some other tags. Yes? You don't need a meta tag. You can, you can put a meta tag in there. Repeat that, please. Yes, that needs to be at the... If you don't put it in, if you don't put it in, the browser has to guess at what specification you're following, and it may or may not do a good job with it from there. Um, some, of the, some of the issues that, hey, if you don't put your doc type in, you're liable to be able to get away with it, um, but you may have some unpredictable results. It's best to be explicit and say, hey, this is HTML5 and, and, and so on. Yes? No. Our, our, our web page is going to look almost the same as it did before with one difference. All right? And that difference is the title is going to be up here in the title bar. So I'll go and save this and click refresh. Now notice it says our first page. All right? So appearance-wise, you're correct. It doesn't really matter. But there are some reasons later on why, you, why it's good to have the head and the body section. So it's, it's a good practice to do that, to keep your page organized. Now, that, that implies a good question. And both of these actually kind of imply good questions, the last couple of questions. What if we break one of the rules? What if we do something that is wrong? All right, what happens? Well, let's, let's try. Let's try breaking some rule. Let's not have a head section. No difference. Let's forget the end H1 tag. Let's <coughs> typo, and instead of H2, we'll do H space 2. Okay, that did make a difference. Brings up an interesting point about web pages. All right. If you break the rules, the browser takes a guess at what you mean. All right. And you know, I, I know I'm, I'm making it sound like there's a little person in there. And in some older model computers, there was a little person. That, no, I'm just making that up. But if you break the rules, the browser takes a guess at what you meant. And sometimes it guesses right, sometimes it guesses wrong. All right? Your best bet, therefore, is to follow the rules because you don't want the browser to be guessing on how to display your page. So there are times, yeah, you can get away with some things. You could get away with not having a head section. You could get away with having the H1 instead of in the body have it in the head section. You could get away with leaving out a tag. But then the browser has to sort of guess at what you want. And 
Here's another important thing to consider. Other browsers may guess differently. And they do. Exactly. So, for example, I may try this. You know, let's try this. This is always a good error. If I forget the end title tag. Wow. Google Chrome, I don't see anything for that page. Internet Explorer, I don't see anything for that page. And neither do I in Firefox. Interesting. All of those do the same thing. What do you think happened there? Why don't I see anything? Go ahead. Exactly. Be exactly, because we never said where the title ends. The browser says, hey, that whole thing must be the title. And therefore, and I've had students panic with gigantic web pages, and they just, or maybe you're, maybe you're not going to forget the title tag, but maybe you're going to typo and do something like that, where it doesn't recognize that that is an end title tag. And you might have the same thing. Or it doesn't know where the title ends, so it assumes the entire web page is the title. All right? So, even though these rules sometimes seem flexible, that's no excuse to break them, if that makes sense, because your results are going to be unpredictable. And they're going to be unpredictable across different browsers. Now, I wasn't able in this case to, to show you an example of where it worked in one browser, but didn't work in another, but believe me, there are situations uh, um, where that's the case. Actually, the worst aspect of this is if there are bugs in the browser, it's possible that you can do everything right and still have a problem. But we won't talk about that today. That's too depressing to think about before a holiday weekend. All right? Um, so we'll, we'll just continue uh, on. The first few web pages we're going to do are going to be simple enough that it's unlikely that we'll run into any browser compatibility issues because we're not going to be doing anything too fancy. All right. A lot of browser compatibility issues come into play when we start using CSS to a greater degree. Okay. So that is now what we have now is a completed web page. All right. What we had last time was just a fragment of a web page, but now we have truly a completed web page. Now, there's a few other tags that you can have. All right. Let's say, for example, I was going to have a page about different courses here at LC. So CISS 121, CISS 216, and so on. I could actually do something like this. CISS courses at LCCC. I could then have an article about CISS 216, and I could have an article about CISS 121.
Now, visually, it didn't really change anything, these article tags. But it helps us to divide things up. If you have a couple different sections of your page, one thing you can use is you can use an article tag. There's also a section tag. And that just helps you to subdivide your page into sections. That'll become useful when we get more into CSS. So it's sort of a good practice to get into um, initially. Section, yeah. There's a whole set of tags that relate to, like, parts of a page. Um, one of them is uh, article. One of them is section. One of them is nav. <coughs> nav, N-A-V, for your navigation. So when we talk about links, you can have links to other pages and uh, like your main navigation you'd put in a nav section. Um, another one is, I'm doing this off the top of my head because I'm trying to pull up my notes here. Uh, another one is, is um, heading no, header, header, and that's confusing because there's a head and a header tag. Again, I didn't make it up. All right, and then finally there's a sidebar. But we'll talk about these as um, the course progresses. And um, it is, part, there is a, also a footer tag, thank you. So this sort of allows you to break your page into sections, and again, that can be useful when we're styling the page, and so on. How do you put the text in the middle of the page? All right, excellent question. Um, anything that you want to do about the appearance of the page is best done via CSS. So you're not talking about, when, when you say, how do I center the text on the page? You're not talking about adding new content. You're simply talking about changing the appearance of content that you already have. And the answer to those questions is always, it's best done via CSS. Now, there are some HTML tags that allow you to do some formatting. We're going to avoid those, all right? We're going to avoid those because those drastically limit the flexibility of your web pages. Um, go ahead. Either way. Either way. A any kind of formatting, um, um, any kind of formatting that deals simply with the appearance of the page is best done through CSS. Let me explain to you why, all right? And this has always been an important principle, but with the uh, popularity of mobile devices, this becomes even more critical, all right? I may have a web page, and a person may view the web page on a computer, or the person may view it on a phone screen. They may want the same content on those pages, but a page is going to look very different on a phone screen than it will look on a computer screen. On a computer screen, I might have a nice two-column page that looks great. If I try to put a two-column page on a phone, it's going to be very difficult to read. All right? So therefore, I may want the exact same content. Remember, the mobile user and the computer user want to see the same content, but it needs to be formatted differently for the different devices, all right? If we make sure that there's no formatting at all in the HTML, but all the formatting is controlled via the CSS, then we can simply change which CSS file the page gets depending on whether they're on a mobile device or on a desktop uh, device. Now, we've yet to talk about CSS, so some of that might be uh, a little confusing at this point, but know that our goal is the flexibility. And really, the content of the page is one thing. The way it looks is something totally separate. And we can change the way it looks without changing the content. And in that way, we can accommodate 
many devices. That's why any question that deals with how the page is going to look is going to be answered by CSS. So if I were to ask, how can I make the background of the page instead of white, make it gray? That's CSS. How could I make the font instead of Times New Roman, make it Arial? CSS. Because that's not new content, right? It's just changing the way the existing content looks. How could I make the font bigger? CSS. Smaller? CSS. And so on down the line. Other questions? Yes, we'll, we'll at least, uh, we'll introduce you to that notion. There is a mobile web development course that, that um, goes in much more detail about it. But yeah, uh, later on in the course we'll address that, uh, we'll address that issue. Now, one thing about nesting that is important. The rules of nesting say that if a tag starts within a tag, it also ends within that same tag. So let's look at this document and see if it's properly nested. All right, HTML is the first tag, right? So it's not inside anything. The head tag. The head tag starts within the HTML tag. Does it end within the HTML tag? Yeah. So that is properly nested. The title tag starts within the head tag. Does it end within the head tag? Yes, it does. So that's fine. Body starts within the HTML tag, ends within the HTML tag. H1 starts within the body, ends within the body. The article starts within the body, ends within the body. H1 starts within the article, ends within the article, and so on. So this is an example of a page being properly nested. Because any tag that starts within a tag ends within that tag. So what would be an example of not properly nested? This would. If I had, let's say, this end paragraph tag outside of the article. All right. That's an example of not being properly nested. Why? Because the paragraph tag started within the article and yet it ended after the article. So that's not properly nested. And again, this is where indenting is valuable. Through indenting we can see visually that things are properly nested without even thinking about it to any degree. It sort of sticks out. It needs to be put here. Again, what happens if you don't get the nesting right? Well, all bets are off, right? You haven't followed the rules, so the browser sort of has to figure out what it thinks you meant. And again, may, may guess right, may guess incorrectly. You really don't know. And different browsers may guess in a different way, and therefore, may work fine in Internet Explorer, bad in Firefox, or vice versa. Now one thing you might notice is that some tags, in this case I put the H1 and end H1 on the same line. In this case I have the article and end article on different lines. Doesn't matter. I could do this. I wanted. You have a lot of flexibility on how you format your code within the HTML document. Because remember, the browser doesn't care about that. 
and therefore the formatting of the code as far as how many blank spaces you have, that's what I mean by formatting the code, uh, really is, is to increase the read readability for you. Yes? Yeah. Uh, the question was, is, is how can I put something in that maybe it's a note to someone looking at this uh, later on that you don't want to display? That's a comment, all right? And comments generally go like this. <coughs> maybe I'll put a last update here. Last updated August twenty eighth, twenty thirteen, and that won't appear anywhere on the that won't appear within the browser. Now the one thing you have to be careful for, all right, is remember that people can view your source, so people can see the comments that they say view source. So you know. Don't put, uh, you know, don't put uh, a comment in there that says the administrator password is password, you know, as, and therefore anyone that's smart enough to view the source will be able to get in and, and, and have all kinds of fun. All right. But yeah, you can put comments in there if you have explanation um, explaining why you do something. Yeah, strictly speaking, this is not a tag. A comment is, is something else. A comment is like a declaration. Notice it begins with the exclamation point. And yeah, that says, hey, disregard. This tells the browser, disregard that. Are the dashes required? Yes. Near as I know, near as I know all HTML comments look like this. I actually don't use eight, uh, comments in HTML all that much. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but um, you can use them if you if you need to. Good question. What if I wanted to create a blank line? All right. What do you think the answer to that question is? Yes. That's one possible answer. There is a tag called the break tag, which is a BR that will put a blank line. But I don't like that answer. Pardon me? No? no? Well, let's think about the question. If I put a blank line, is that really adding any content? No. That's simply adding space between two things. So guess what the answer is? It's CSS. You're going to be so sick of hear, hearing me say that, oh, that's a CSS question, or that's a CSS problem, right? Because if you want to have, an, if you want to have extra space between two things, you're not adding any extra content. That's simply a visual thing. You want to break it up with more space on your page. So that's a visual aspect. You want a blank line or, or whatever in there. And again, any visual question or any question relating to the appearance of the web page is a CSS thing. So that will be accomplished via CSS. Now, the earlier answer that there's a break tag, yes, there is an HTML break tag. All right, there's, it's just BR tag. All right, but I would suggest not using them because, again, when you embed it in the HTML, it's in there for every platform, and you lose a little bit of flexibility as far as displaying the same content a different way. That extra break, that extra line is going to be there on every on every page. So I can apply a different style sheet and get rid of that. Whereas if I do the formatting via CSS, I can apply a different style sheet and get rid of the extra spaces. So anything with appearance, the answer is going to be CSS. Other questions?
we've learned oh, a good portion of, in principle, what HTML is. So really what we're going to do is we're just going to kick back for the next 12 weeks and relax and we'll meet again in November. And no, 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 just kidding. As they say, the devil's in the details, right? Um, in principle, yeah, we learned about tags, we learned about nesting, we learned about white space and all that. That's a good part of HTML, but there's a couple more concepts we need to learn. And there's a whole bunch of other tags. We haven't talked about what a tag is for a link, what a tag is for an image, what a tag is for a list, and so on. And so we'll be adding those things uh, over the course of the semester. All right. The other thing we'll be doing, of course, is doing CSS formatting. Yes? What about tables? Yeah, tables will be another example. Now, tables, again, for those of you that have done some web development before, depending on when you learned it and how you learned it, you may have used tables to lay out your page. Uh, that's a practice we also won't follow because, again, using tables for layout really limit the layout of the page to a certain look, and it really locks you in that, and we want to avoid doing that. All right? Um, tables for layout is definitely old school. And it's not even like old school in like like in terms of me sitting back and reminiscing and talking about the good old days, you know, and, and that kind of thing. It, it's a case of those are the bad old days, all right? People use tables because there was no other option to achieve the layout. Whereas with CSS, we can do so much more and do it in so much more of a flexible way, all right? The other thing that we're going to focus on. And, and I've kind of given this, uh, kind of shortchanged this because I wanted to get you up and running with some HTML stuff, is the design aspect of web development. All right? Um, what, what's really interesting about this as a field is there's both a technical aspect and a design aspect. The technical aspect is how do I make these tags? How do I make a link? How do I make a heading? How do I make a paragraph? How do I make a list? All right. And then in the CSS, how do I make something be blue? How do I make something be a bigger font? And all those kinds of things. Those are technical questions. You have to learn the instructions. You have to learn the code to do it. Just as important, though, is a sense of design. In other words, how should I make this page look? Not how to do it. But what's the best look for this page so that I communicate more effectively the intent of the page? So I make it easier for users to navigate through my website. So that I help users achieve their goals. A lot of people think web design is simply a matter of picking nice graphics and pretty colors and interesting fonts and all that. That's a very small aspect of web design. The bigger part of web design is designing sites that are usable. And what do I mean by usable? I mean um, help users achieve their goals. All right. These two things are, you know, like the right and left side of something. If one side is strong and the other side is weak, it's not going to work very well. All right. We're going to learn via CSS how to make every word on your web page a different color. All right. Is that a good idea to do? No. All right. Um, therefore, to learn like how to use color effectively to emphasize your mess uh, a message and to think through how you want to do these things, that's really what design is, figuring out how to make your page more usable and uh, help people achieve their goals. And yes, we do want the page to look good too. But more important than looking good, we want the page to be usable. All right? And so going forward, we'll spend some time on that as well. Are there any questions at this point? Yes. Um, there are tags for that in HTML5. Um, we may talk about some of those and certainly if you have questions about any particular thing we could we could spend some time uh, talking about those the one thing about those is that's that that's one area where it is very easy to get carried away and start doing things because it's fun to do all right 
and not worrying about does it actually help the user get what they want to do. And in some cases, they're appropriate and they're effective on a page. In other cases, they're just uh, sort of an annoyance for the user. Other questions? Can you put a like a link in? To 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 link, yeah, yeah. Um, that's done with the link tag, and the link tag um, is simply an a tag, um, and then you put in the name of the page. A href equals. And I think it's covered in the book. Um, if not, that will be one of the first things that we'll talk about um, on Wednesday. All right. Remember, we do not have class this coming Monday because of Labor Day. So we'll see you on Wednesday. By the way, anything that we don't cover in class, or maybe some things like if you're really getting this material and you're sort of curious about something else, like, you know, gee, I really want the content on my page centered, you know, or how do I put in an audio clip or whatever, by all means, feel free to, to bring them up in lab. You know, uh, the, in, the, in the course lecture, you know, I'm covering the, the, the core material, but if there's some additional stuff that you want uh, to talk about, you know, I'll be glad to talk about them in lab. All right, we'll see you upstairs.